What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel and today we are taking a look at the King Kong or the LDARC's FPV Egg Pro. It is the 138 millimeter FPV racer PNP version. I believe it is only offered in the plug and play version which I have here today. So check this baby out. It comes in this nice plastic carrying case just like the other King Kong products or the LDARC products. So let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. Wow, it is looking nice. Yeah, slightly bigger than the King Kong Fly Egg 130. Now right off the bat, very similar looking, a uh, nice thick carbon fiber frame looks like around four millimeters in thickness. Wow, very nice. And looking like some sunny sky motors with some gem fan flash props. Oh wow, what an upgrade. And we are also given the XT30 connector, pretty long one too, but gives us room to connect it to the hind leg or zip tie it. So taking a look here, wow, really nice. Got the run cam or similar to the run cam Micro Swift. I'm pretty sure this is a CCD camera. So another upgrade there. So looking pretty nice. There's the dipole whip antenna sticking out of the back led light in the back and so we are missing the receiver so there's a lot of room inside there and looking like looking like there's an empty port right here in the back and looking like that might be the the receiver port there so hopefully that is and we get some harness to just connect it so there's no soldering on the flight controller so taking a look on the bottom uh, yeah, there's the uh, transmitter right there. I think that is the same transmitter that we are accustomed to with all the other King Kong products. There's the one button to change the channels, and I believe that it is the 16 channel. And the motor wires are cloth taped, kind of clothy taped onto the motor uh, or, or, or onto the arms themselves. So let's go ahead and put this on the side and check what else we get in the box. And oh wow, we got a pretty hefty size battery and it is a tattoo battery looking like a 850 milliamp 11.1 volt three cell battery guys. Wow, 850 milliamp three cell battery that we are given with this one. Wow, wow, too bad they don't give you extra ones. <laughs> so they cut the little battery um, slot a little bit bigger on this one to give you just one. So if you're gonna get extra ones, you're probably gonna have to cut out that mid section and leave that other section in there so you can put this size battery in here. Nice, but we are given this nice battery. So very, very nice. Let's check out what else we get in the box or the case, box within the case. So we got some extra props here. Looks like 3050s and oh, look at that. It is branded KingKongRC.com. Now, I thought they were getting rid of the King Kong name and going with the LDARC name, but I guess they their products are still going to be marked with KingKongRC.com. So 3050 props, and looks like there's a bunch of them in there. Okay, so we got one, two, and how many are there in there? So we got one, Two white ones. No, there's one, two, three white ones. One, two, three yellow ones. Okay, so we got three white ones, three yellow ones, and looks like looks like four clear ones on this bag. So that's a lot of props. So we get a bunch of props. So in total, looks like. We'll get a full set of clear props times two, a uh, full set of white props plus two more, and a full set of yellow props plus two more. So nice, very, very nice. Lots of props. So they are understanding that we do need lots of props. So here we go. Another bag containing some zip ties, some rubber bands, and what are these non-slip pads i'm thinking those are non-slip battery pads so we get a bag of those and we get a instruction manual chinese and 
English on the opposite side. So we'll take a look at that in a bit. And we get a little bag of, yeah, receiver harnesses. Looks like they give you two of the same ones. Yeah, they look identical to me. So we are given two of these. So we're going to need one of these to attach our receiver of choice. And that is just about it inside of the case. So let's lay it all out and take a look at the quadcopter a little bit closer. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and measure the quadcopter right out of the box. Comes in at 133 grams. And let's go ahead and put the battery next to it comes in at 204 grams all right next up let's go ahead and measure up the aluminum side bracket panels and it is measuring in at 3.5 millimeters very nice and let's go ahead and measure up the carbon fiber frame and it is measuring in at four millimeters wow very nice solid four millimeter one solid unibody X frame configuration here. Very, very nice. As you can see, we got the four motor screws holding on all of the motors in each of the pods. And we got three little fill eyes sticking out on the end of the motor section here to protect the motor. So pretty nice, just in case you get into a crash here. So very nice, looking like sunny sky motors. We'll take a closer look at that. We got the LED lights screwed on to the side brackets and we got three standoffs, one, two, and three. And looking like aluminum standoffs as well with some nice gold colored screws. And we got the FPV egg logo on the side. And we got some camera tilt angle measurements right on the bracket. 0 15 30 and 45 and we got that single screw on each side to loosen up and change the camera tilt angle one on each side and looking pretty nice i really like the uh, construction of this design uh, very protective and looking really really cool there's the xt30 battery connector coming out of the back and yeah it's got a zip tie right on the back of the carbon fiber frame on the bottom, holding it down. As you can see, there it is. So it helps to protect the battery cable from being pulled out. Now I'm going to put another one right here on the hind leg. So it's going to be double protected as well. The whip antenna for the VTX. And take a look at the VTX here. Looking like the same VTX, but naked this time. There's the single button to change the channels. And I believe it is a 16 channel VTX. Uh, 25 to 100 milliwatts switchable. But uh, the, the jumper is on the opposite side of this VTX. And this VTX is hunkered down by a couple of zip ties here. One here and one there. And also the power cable is coming off from the top. And the signal wire there is on this side of the VTX. So I believe it ships with the 100 milliwatts switched. Hopefully that is the case. So I'm not going to change the VTX uh, output power as of yet. So there's a buzzer right up in the front, recessed uh, hole right in the front of the carbon fiber frame itself built in. So it tucks in there. You can't even see it. Wow, really, really nice touch. Just like some of the other Fly Egg series, the buzzer is hidden right from view and very, very nice tucked in. So we got two screws up in the front one, two here holding down the bracket. And we got the four standoff screws right here and two more screws holding down the back portion of the bracket. So just a fantastic, fantastic construction. And we got the run cam micro swift like CCD camera up in the front. So I'm pretty sure it will be a pretty decent uh, video capture here. Now there's the uh, four in ones right on the bottom and the flight controller right on the top. So very nice construction and the rubber band is going through. So if you snap this rubber band uh, and it gets old and brittle and it comes off, then I believe you're going to have to unscrew a lot of stuff in order to put a new rubber band in there. So you're probably going to end up uh, better off sliding a 
uh, Velcro battery strap instead of trying to put a new rubber band, even though they give you extra rubber bands. So that is it. And there's the cloth uh, tape holding down the motor wires to the arm and looking pretty nice, guys. I'm just loving this quadcopter here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at the motors. All right, taking a closer look at the motors here, it has the King Kong RC.com branding on the motors themselves. And right up underneath, it says made by Sunny Sky. So I'm not sure if King Kong wants to retain the King Kong branding or they want to switch over to the LDARC. Anyway, it is the XT1406 3600 kV motors. And this one is the counterclockwise made in China. And it has a nice resistance to it too. The magnets are nice and tight so very very nice motors and we know sunny skies are pretty decent there and these are the 3050 props um very close in resemblance to gem fan flash 3052s now i'm not sure if king kong blatantly ripped off gem fan flash props or is this uh provided by gem fan especially for king kong nevertheless um it is a welcome upgrade because these props are very very nice and these motors are very very nice as well all right so moving on to the mid section of the quadcopter here we see that there is a four in one esc slash pdb board on the bottom and it is the 20 amp d shot escs pre-flashed with bl Halley s 16.6 firmware so it is able to handle 2 to 4S batteries. And we also see that it is also soft mounted. Notice the rubberized standoff on the bottom of the ESCs. So these standoff screws go from the bottom right through those rubberized standoffs on the bottom of the ESCs. And they are screwed onto the pink aluminum standoff in between the top and the bottom board and the nylon nut is holding it down from the top so very very nice and right on top we have the fly controller and the fly controller is the f4 fly controller and this time around it has built in beta flight osd so thank you thank you very much and we have the micro usb connection port to connect to your beta flight configurator so taking a look around uh, we see that there is a connection port in the back uh, looking like the receiver harness is uh, going to go in right here. So this is the receiver port. So it has RX on it. And we also see that there is a boot and it is pointing to this little yellowish goldish button with that black little depressible button on the top. That is the boot button for the board. So thank you very much. We have a boot button as well. And it is also marked with KingKongRC.com. So, and there's the arrow pointing forward. So the flight controller does not need any board alignment. And we also see that there is a audio and a video pad as well. So looking pretty nice. And this flight controller is pre-flashed with a beta flight omnibus firmware 3.2.1. So that is awesome. And up in the front of the quadcopter, we see that there is a run cam micro swift looking like FPV camera, but it is not. It is a copy, but nevertheless, it is a CCD camera. It is a 600 TV line NTSC standard camera with a 2.1 millimeter lens and the field of view of 160 degrees. So it should give us a, a nice FPV video feed. And in the back of the quadcopter, we see that there is the LED light fixture panel screwed onto the aluminum side brackets. All right, so here is a look at the instruction manual of the FPV Egg Pro. We got some specs here on the front and what it comes with. And as we move along, we see the VTX channel lineup and we have a diagram of the flight controller as well and a diagram of the ESC and the motor uh, direction. And we are also given the how to bind and set up with the XM receiver and also the FlySky receiver as well. And this one here is looking like the Futaba 
and on the opposite side it is looking like the DSM so they give you all of the binding and setting up procedures for all of the receivers some of the parts and how to update your firmware in Betaflight as well and the modes as well as the PIDs are looking like the default Betaflight PID. So there you have it guys, the instruction manual. So let's go ahead and put on a receiver on this bad boy here. I'm probably gonna use the FR Sky XM receiver. So let's go ahead and um, solder the receiver and plug it in and bind it with a transmitter. Okay, so here I have the XM receiver, the FR Sky XM receiver, and this is the bag that it came with, and this is the documentation that it comes along with as well. So looking at the documentation and the orientation of the receiver, here we have the bind button on the top right, the antenna on the right, and the three pads. So the one on the top is the S bus, the signal wire. In the middle is the five volt, and on the bottom is the ground wire. So taking a look at one of the harness that it, the quadcopter came with, there was two harness inside of the bag. It is identical. So we see that there's a ground wire. The black is the ground. The red is the five volt. And the yellow wire here is the RC in wire. So this will be our S bus. And this green wire is a three volt. So we don't need that. So what I'm going to do is just lift that little tab up and just remove the green wire. So on the end of the black, the red and the yellow, we're going to attach it to our XM receiver. All right. So here is the XM receiver already soldered onto the wiring harness that came with the quad cutter. So this is the end of the wiring harness. All we got to do is plug this baby in to the receiver port in the back of the quad cutter right there and hit that bind button on the receiver and power up the quad cutter at the same time. Get a transmitter ready to bind and bind the transmitter to this XM receiver. All right, so here I have my Tyrannus QX7S ready to go with a model already set up with FPV Egg Pro on it. So if we go ahead and page over, that is the name that I have given. I put it on a timer for three minutes on voice. And if we scroll down to the bottom and go up and on the internal RF mode D16, and we are going to set it to right here where it says bind and get ready to press this button once the receiver goes into the binding mode. So we got a battery here. We're going to get it ready to plug in and we got the receiver here and there is the bind button right over there. Uh, as small as it seems, if you depress it, you will feel it getting depressed. Uh, better with it naked, without the heat shrink on, so even better yet. So let's go ahead and get it ready to power on, but don't power on yet. Okay, get it ready. Come on. And depress that small bind button. There we go. If you did it correctly, you will see that there is a red light and a green light on the receiver. As you can see there, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit and show you the red and the green light. Okay, so let me zoom out, sorry about that. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit this bind button on the transmitter. Okay. The red light is flashing on the receiver. That means the binding process is finished. So go ahead and unplug the power to the quadcopter. Get out of that binding mode on the transmitter. And let's go ahead and see if we are bound. Let's connect back in there. Oh, the ESCs are just strong there. All right. So we have a green light showing on the receiver. So we are bound. So let's go ahead and make sure that we are bound by turning off the transmitter. 30. Okay, once turned off, 
the receiver light has turned to red so we have a disconnect here so let's go ahead and turn it back on and the green light should come on once we are set there you go we are set so we have a successful binding process all right here we are in beta flight and here's the quadcopter while i was away i did heat shrink the xm receiver as you can see so it is well protected now so let's go ahead and connect to beta flight using the micro usb connector to the flight controller okay i like to connect the quadcopter before i connect the USB to the computer. So let's go ahead and connect. All right, we are connected and we are automatically enabled. So nice. So first thing you want to do is go to CLI. As you can see, we got the beta flight version 3.2.1 with the Omnibus SD uh, firmware. So let's go to CLI and type in DUM and hit enter and here's the dump file let's go ahead and highlight the dump file okay and copy the dump file and have a text notepad opened up and paste that dump file just for future reference just in case we make some mistake here so let's go ahead and disconnect out of cli and reconnect here we go now what you want to do now is calibrate the accelerometer the quadcopter is on a flat level surface so the dump file is just your insurance in case you mess up something here so you can reload all of the cli dump onto the quadcopter so let's go on to the ports and here we have the usb vcp turned on for configuration 30. msp that is how the quadcopter is communicating to the computer uh, what i like to do is I always like to turn on uart1 okay. uh, just to be on the safe side and we see that the serial RX is turned on on UART 6. And that is probably Ten, where the nine, receiver eight, harness is plugged seven, in as well. Six. Let me turn off the voice alarm. So let's go ahead and save and reboot. All right, so let's go to the configurations tab. And we have the quad X and we don't have motor direction reversed. D-Shot 600 is already set up and motor stop is turned off just the way I like it. So let's scroll down and we don't have any board alignment and we see that the accelerometer is turned on as well as the barometer. I'm going to turn off the barometer and I'm going to leave the accelerometer turned on 8 kilohertz and 2 kilohertz and the CPU load is at 5%. So let's increase the PID loop frequency to 4 kilohertz and save and reboot and see what happens to the CPU load. Go to configuration and we are still at 5% guys. So let's go on down and see if it can go up to 8 kilohertz. Save and reboot. Configurations tab once again. CPU load is at 6% now, and it is handling the 8 and 8, so we're going to leave it right there. Now, personalization on the OSD. Awesome. So we're going to type in FPV Egg Pro. All right. So that is that. That's the name that you are going to see up here on the OSD. So we have the serial-based receiver, and we have an S bus, so that is correct. So scrolling on down, we have LED strip and OSD. We want to turn on the anti-gravity as well as dynamic filter. And that is just about it. We're going to save and reboot. And we are done with the configuration page. So let's go to the power and battery. And onboard ADC, onboard ADC. So minimum cell voltage, I'm going to shrink it down to... 3.0 and 
warning cell voltage I'm gonna shrink it down to 3.1 so save and reboot or just save and let's hit that PID tuning let's check this out okay we are at default beta flight settings so we'll just fly it with the beta flight default settings let's see if there's any filter settings and oh check it out we are on D term low pass filter PT1 and look at that the gyro notch filter 1 and gyro notch filter 2 has been turned off already out of the box uh, but the D term notch filter is still turned on all right so let's go back we're just going to leave it just the way it is so we're going to fly it with default beta flight PIDs let's go on to receiver tab and we got the transmitter turned on but we are not seeing anything here yep there's no connection and let me take a look at the receiver here um check this out the receiver does not have power there's a faint red light on the led so let me go ahead and power it up with a battery and see if that makes any sense now i have the props on so we're gonna pause right here i'm gonna take the props off okay we are back i always like to take my props off if you are connecting to beta flight and you're gonna hit that battery as well so the quadcopter does not have any props all right let's go ahead and power up the quadcopter and see what happens oh look at that we got connection and now if we take a look at the xm receiver the green light is nice and solid and it is bright so we have connection and the quadcopter is spinning like crazy because our channel mapping is wrong we want taer that's how i have my transmitter set up so there we go the quadcopter is nice and steady check it out Two. the midpoints are at 1500 just about just a yaw is at 1501 so very very nice now let's go ahead and see if i got some throttle yep i got throttle i got roll i got pitch and i got the yaw on the right channels nice see if i got my mode set up correctly and it is arming too on top of that let's see if the beeper is working nope all right okay so uh some stuff is working some stuff is not that means we need to do something in the modes tab so let's go ahead and save this and head on over to the modes tab and we see that it does have some preset uh parameters here arming is on aux one yes my arming is on aux one so i'm gonna just shrink the little switch that Why? is correct angle mode in aux two on the low uh, horizon in aux two in the mid and where is air mode air mode i'm going to turn air mode on and we're going to put it on aux two and at the top of the switch okay and we also have a beeper and we're going to set that one to aux three 30. at the top of the switch all right so that is my configuration so let's see if anything else is turned on okay that should be good so i'm gonna hit save okay now everything should be working so if i arm it it is arming if i hit the beeper yes beeper is on and if i hit the mode switch okay horizon and air mode all right so everything is working so i'm gonna did i hit save already yes i should have hit saved already otherwise it would not be working all right so we don't need to go to the motors tab because we are running d shot 600 so let's go on over to the osd so let's see let me turn that logo off and we got the main battery voltage we don't need the crosshairs artificial horizon nor the horizon sidebars timer one no nope. i want timer two fly mode and craft name and throttle position nope 
current drawn. Nope. I just want my and there's a low voltage. Let's scroll down. Okay, power, warn, warnings, and average cell voltage. I'm going to turn those things off. I don't really use those. So let's go ahead and put where everything goes. Now, this is an NTSC camera. So I'm just going to go hit NTSC. And there you go. Battery voltage on the right. Craft name in the middle. And, oh, nope, I like my battery voltage on the top. And fly minutes on Why? the bottom right. Oops, drop it down a little bit. And that's about it. We are set on the OSD. So we got OSD on this FPV Egg Pro. So very nice. That means we are able to set our PIDs right through your goggles out on the field with your transmitter. So that is just awesome. Some of the other King Kong products, we weren't able to do that. And that is what was missing on all of the other King Kong products like 30. the ET series and the fly egg series and now this one has it so thank you very much so i'm gonna hit save and that about does it guys on beta flight configurator so what i'm gonna do now is i'm going to go hit cli once again and i'm gonna hit dump one more time and i'm gonna hit enter and this is the dump file with all the changes that we have made it is the new CLI dump file. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to place it in a new text file. And I'm going to paste it into that. I'm going to save it as a new file. And the old one, I'm going to save it as an old file. All right. So that is just about it for this quadcopter on Betaflight Configurator. All right, so we are done setting up the quadcopter in Betaflight Configurator, and the props are still off. And in the meantime, what I've done was I double-sided sticky tape the XM receiver onto the flight controller, double layer of double-sided sticky tape, and I've also put a zip tie to hold down the XM receiver antenna. So that is all I've done so far. So what I want to do now is I want to test it, final testing before I put the props on and take it out for a flight test. So let's go ahead and turn on the transmitter. Switch warning. Okay. And let's plug in the quadcopter. All right. As you can see, there's the led lights and it is in red so let's see if they're directional yeah they are directional i'm giving forward pitch and pitching back and it's still red going to the left and oops the led light on the right is blinking when i go to the left and the opposite side is blinking when I go to the right. So that needs to be flipped, flipped around so it'll be correct configuration there. So let's go ahead and check out the modes and the arming. Now I have the motor stop turned off. So even if I'm still in angle mode, horizon mode or air mode, when I arm the motors, it will spin. So let's go ahead and check it out. Yes, that was in angle mode, horizon mode, and in air mode air mode regardless if you turn on the motor stop or not the motors will still spin so put it back on angle mode let's check out the beeper yes everything is working just fine so let's go ahead and unplug the quadcopter and turn off the transmitter all right so i think that will conclude this part of the video stay tuned for part two where i take it outside put on some props and give this baby a test flight so that is it for now guys thank you so much for tuning in and watching have a great day and we'll see you again next time